Hi everyone, it's Lisa Vemini here, and uh, this tutorial is going to be an overview of a missile turret scene um, recreated in Blender from one of the Final Fantasy games uh, cutscenes, which I thought was pretty cool. So let me know if you know which Final Fantasy it's from. Anyway, here is the final render of the scene. Okay, that was it. Now let me show you how I made it. Uh, we're starting off with our default Blender scene. I'm just going to delete the default cube. I'm going to hit Shift F1, and I'm just going to append in my turret model here so you can see it. Um, it wasn't made with any special uh, modeling tricks, just very basic, starting off with you know a square and extruding out, adding some loop cups, uh, loop cuts with Control R. It's all pretty basic. The only thing I thought I might point out with the model of the turret is that I've turned on a mirror modifier, so I only had to model a quarter of it. And I also turned on a um, bevel modifier here just to give it a little bit of roundness at the edges there um, so that the light bounces off the corners a bit better. Uh, and I saved time. And as you can see here, down the bottom here, I just made this look kind of techy by just you know, extruding out um, in face mode um, random parts to make it look like a base. So nothing uh, too strict. I was pretty free with just making something that looked cool enough uh, to use as this turret. From here, I'll just start setting up my scene. Uh, in top view, I'm just taking the default camera that was already there, uh, moving it to the right on the x-axis there, and adjusting it in camera view. So I'll move the turret um, just to the center of the screen for some render tests, and then I'll come to the world buttons, turn on ambient occlusion, and just switch that to multiply. I'll take the factor down a little bit from one. I'll also turn on environment lighting at 0.5, and I'll just uh, make some small changes to the distance and um, pump the samples up a little bit. Now I've made the ambient color white, but we're actually gonna come in and add a image texture I'll just name this sky, and then if I come in and select my sky texture map here, I'll just take down the filter size as small as we can go. Back in well buttons, I'll change the environment lighting uh, to sky texture instead of uh, white, and now we'll see some really nice ambient um, lighting around our turret. Next step is just adding a plane and placing it behind the turret uh, when you're looking through the camera. In camera view, I'll scale it so that it's just coming out a certain amount larger than uh, what the camera can see. Since we're gonna be moving the camera around a bit, uh, we need some extra space. And this will be our backdrop. So I'll just come in and unwrap with the U key in edit mode. And then in the image uh, window there, I'll just come in and add an image of this hanger, which will be included in the uh, downloads as well in the description. So I'll just stretch out the UVs so that it maps um, pretty much where I'd like it on the image. So that we have this hanger sort of in the background, maybe a little bit of the ground uh, there at the bottom of the camera. So from there, I'm going to just add a material to this plane. And then I'll come to the texture buttons and add uh, an image texture. Apply the hanger picture that we'd already just loaded then. And now I'll just come down and change the mapping from generated to UV. And that will allow us to use the UV coordinates that uh, I had just placed before. Now in this case, I'm going to up the samples of the texture, but with the filter size, instead of taking that down, I'm actually going to beef that up to like 4.5 and that will blur the image. So we're actually going to use a uh, fake uh, depth of field. Finally, I'll just come back to the material buttons and turn on shadeless and that's all we have to do. So if we give that a render, we can then see uh, that we've got our turret with the lighting and our shadeless uh, image of the hanger in the background. They don't seem to match completely yet, 
but uh, this is where we start uh, messing about and getting everything to look a bit more like it fits together. Firstly, I just want to concentrate a bit more on the turret lighting. So I'm going to add a main light, which in this case is an area light. I'll position it so that it's coming down, pointing at an angle on the turret. Beef up the samples, take the energy up to about three. I'll take the distance down to about eight just to get some nice um, diffuse lighting. And then I'll turn on ray shadow for the color, I'll, I'll make it sort of an orangey uh, sun color, a bit more like it's evening. And I'm actually going to take the white level down a bit, sort of into the gray area with that bar on the right. So that main light's given it a lot more of a natural look. Seems to match the uh, background image a lot better now as well. Oh, one quick thing I forgot is I'll just come into the world options and turn on real sky. So I'll just give that a quick render test. It's looking pretty good. But I might just make some quick adjustments to this backdrop. And since it's shadeless, I'm gonna do most of the editing here in the texture buttons. I'm gonna take down the saturation, uh, mess with the brightness and contrast. You can see the numbers I'm uh, ending up with there. And I'm also just pushing the red, um, pretty much giving it a bit of a basic color grade. So that works. It looks a bit more, um, a bit more fitting and a bit more um, film-esque, I suppose. But lights and textures aren't everything, and adding some nodes will really give a huge boost to the visuals of this shot. So, uh, oh, you just noticed I've accidentally gone in and added material nodes, not compositor nodes. I'll just quickly turn the right ones on. Now I've got a few um, presets that I use for the node compositor. So I'm actually going to come in and just import a node tree, which I've saved as a group by hitting control G in another file. And I use this whenever I have a scene that I want to add some more contrast to. And this will be available in the um, dot blend package as well, sort of separate. So you can throw this into your own renders and um, see how it works. So yeah, all I've done there is just shift F1, import that node tree. Um, I connected it to the nodes and then just hit Alt G to um, make the group end and just become free nodes. So with that node group now attached to my compositor output, let's do a quick test render and see what happens. So you can see how much it adds now to the render. It gives it a really, um, you know, glare blown look. Uh, I wanted something stylized for this render, so um, I didn't mind pushing things a bit more extreme. Back in the node compositor, I've just added a viewer node. And just by holding shift and control and left clicking on each node, you can see its effect. So see, I've got a color balance and the saturation, a little bit of color uh, correction there. Down the bottom uh, are some nodes to create a vignette effect. And then over towards the right there, just some lens distortion and glare. So with the basic uh, lighting and scene setup completed, I'll just take the main turret shaft object and add a material to that. I'll switch to uh, Orinea and Blind for the diffuse and specular. Crank up that roughness to about 1.5. And I'll take the brightness of the material right down and give it a really sort of maroon, dark, pale, reddish color. That looks like a pretty good color to use there. From there, I'm just going to switch into uh, vertex mode and Alt right click to select a couple of these loops. I'll quickly make one at the bottom as well. By hitting Control E, I can just add a uh, mark seam indicator so that now as I come into the uh, image window and again just hit U to apply uh, the UVs I'll come in and choose uh, my metal one texture just a pretty stock metal texture that I can, I can apply to this model uh, just to give it a little bit of uh, randomness 
So I'm wanting a pretty quick turnaround with the scene and again, pretty stylized. So I don't need to do anything too crazy or uh, too custom uh, in terms of textures. Just throw one on and see what we can do to get it looking good in the most efficient way. So after adding a image material, uh, image texture, sorry, uh, with that same uh, image, again, I'll just come in and make some quick changes with the brightness uh, to the texture. It'll come down to mapping and switch to switch that to the UV map as well. And in this case, we're going to take the color uh, and have it affect the diffuse color by about 0.5, and then have it also affect the specular um, and the hardness, uh, etc. And you can just play around with those um, influences and see what works. All right, looks cool. A little bit rougher, um, but not completely convincing yet. Uh, one thing that's getting me is because of that mirror modifier, the texture's getting repeated. So I'm just going to apply that modifier. And then I'll quickly come in and just add a seam at the vertical um, point of the turret the vertical loop here on the side, just try and maneuver so that I can alt right click and select that loop. I'll then control E and mark seam. And I'll do the same for the other uh, middle loop as well here. And by adding those seams and then switching back um, with control tab, to face selection mode, I can just hit L and that will select um, a chunk of uh, in between where the seams have been placed. So any section where the seams cross over, it will select that, se that section only. So that just allows me to select those faces on the UV map, uh, move them around to a different position, and then we don't get that uh, repeating or mirrored look of the texture. So one more thing I think this material I could use is a subtle reflection map. So I'll just uh, add a new texture, call it reflect. Uh, for the image texture, I'm just selecting a random texture that I'm gonna use um, to fake the reflections. I'll just um, take the filter size down again. And this time I'll change the mapping coordinates to reflect uh, reflection. And then I'll change the uh, projection to tube from there, I'll just turn on uh, diffuse color. I'll take that down pretty low. And I'll also just have it change the, uh, or influence the specular color a little bit as well. So that looks pretty cool now. Reflects a bit of the bluish sky. Also still has that ambient um, occlusion light on it, making it look a bit more uh, fitting to the evening scene. Next, I'll work on this top part of the turret. I've just given it the same material as the, the middle part of the turret there. And I've just clicked on that too uh, to give it uh, a single user material or its own material. So I'll call that one turret top. And what I'm gonna do is just change the diffuse color and push it towards a bluey, um, fairly pale blue color in this case. Same with the specular as well. And while I'm at it, I might just quickly change the red part of the turret's uh, specular and make that a little bit more orange. Similar to the other object on the turret, I'll just apply the uh, mirror modifier so that we have uh, faces on either side that we can place into a different part of the texture. And in this case, I'll just change the uh, reflection projection to flat just to switch it up so that um, the reflections don't look exactly the same on each part of the turret. Next up is the bottom model of the turret. Um, I had sort of tried to add a material for it just before, I didn't, uh, but I'm actually going to come in and again uh, take the previous material that I made, make it its own material. Uh, don't forget to also do the same to the textures that you're going to be adjusting. Uh, give them a new material, uh, sorry, a new texture or a new user. Uh, before you start editing or you'll notice that it will suddenly make changes in other materials that you had that same texture applied to. The only change I'll make to this bottom one is the uh, first texture, the metal texture. I'll change the uh, coordinates to generated and a uh, cube just because I can't be bothered giving that whole thing a UV map. <laughs> so again, 
keeping in the tradition of uh, being efficient. And just quickly before I test render, if I select all of these objects and the one I added the material to last down the bottom, hit Control L and choose materials to link them all together. So it's looking better and better each test render I do. Uh, I just won't forget this extra little um, flaps model at the top of the turret. I'll give that the same material as the uh, top of the turret and the same texture as well. I'll just quickly unwrap that. So that's all I'm going to add in terms of materials for the turret itself. From here I'm just going to come in and uh, create a rig for the turret so that we can get it moving. So I'll just hit Shift A and add in an armature. I'll just move this first bone down to the bottom and rotate it to create a, uh, a root bone that will move everything. And then I'll just hit Shift A again while in edit mode to create one more bone. I'll just move the tip of that bone up to go across the length of the turret to be our main uh, turret rotation uh, bone. And I'll just parent the um, the turret rotation bone to the uh, the main bone there at the bottom and keep offset. So then I'll just begin uh, selecting uh, objects and parenting, uh, parenting them to the different bones with the bone parent type. And I'll pretty much only need to uh, directly attach the models to the bones except for the flaps here at the top. So to prepare I'll just come in and turn on x-ray for the armature and change it to stick visualization. I'll just shift S snap the cursor up here to uh, the first flap and creating a new bone I'll just place it uh, the root of this bone near where the uh, the flap hinge will will come open. So with that first bone placed I'll then just hit uh, control P parent the flap object to the armature with armature deform Come in and just hit L and that will select uh, the flat one of the flaps at a time since they are separate uh, meshes within the object. But just before I start adding the vertex groups, I'll come back to the armature and just change some of the names to, uh, to be more recognizable. So with this top bone named lid1, I'll just simply hit the sign for those vertices and you can see it moving the flap mesh. From there I'll change the uh, bone in the bone options to XYZ uh, Euler from Quaternion. And from there it's pretty much just a case of uh, tweaking the roll uh, by going into the end properties tab there in the 3D view and just checking the uh, rotation on the X axis and the roll will dictate um, how that will uh, open the lid. So pretty much switching between the roll uh, factor and also changing where the uh, tip of the bone uh, is placed. And with the combination of those two things, I should get a nice um, look of the lid opening as if it's hinged to the side of the turret. One tiny uh, little adjustment there at the root, just to change the hinge point of the lid so that there isn't too much of a gap. And that's looking pretty good. So just by moving that X um, axis with the parameter, you can see it opening and closing uh, quite mechanically. From there, I'll just duplicate and um, mirror over the bone to the other four places. I'll turn on names uh, in the armature options so I can see which uh, bone I'm dealing with. And I'll just quickly rename uh, these new bones to lid 2, lid 3 and lid 4. Once again I'll just create those names in my vertex groups. Hit L on each uh, new flap and, and press Assign. So that's all for now uh, with vertex groups.
And if you notice the uh, rotation is a bit off, you can just come in and, and readjust the roll. Sometimes the mirroring can have an effect like that on uh, and make some changes that you need to adjust. So anyway, I'll just select all the bones with that done. Alt R, uh, Alt G or Alt S just to uh, return everything back to the default um, created transformations. So now back to working on some scene uh, stuff here. I'll just add in a plane and move this over a bit more over towards the camera to the, um, the to the right of the 3D view there in top view. I'll just make a small adjustment to the uh, back plate as well. And so this this ground plane here is just going to act as uh, a foreground, as if there's some uh, bitumen. So again, I'll just um, UV map it to uh, this this image here, which is just a um, a random image um, of a aircraft carrier. I'm pretty much going to be using a form of um, uh, camera projection, I suppose, in a way. The camera angle is sort of the same as uh, the camera in my scenes, so that's why I use this particular image. I'll just give this floor plane the material called foreground. And again, I'm going to choose uh, Oranea, uh, switch to the blin for specular. Again, uh, give this a new image texture with the same image as uh, the one that we UV mapped. I'll just crank the brightness up a bit for this one since uh, the image is a little bit dark for what I'd like. And I'll take down that saturation just so that it can work with the lights in my scene a bit better. Again, I'll switch it to uh, UV mapping coordinates. And there we have some nice uh, foreground in front of the turrets that can... Um, really, it's just acting as a... Um, way to block out the view for the turrets coming from the ground when they lift up. I'll move that ground plane to layer 2. So to give this foreground um, a bit more light I'll just come in and add a hemi pointing from just behind the camera and pointing a little bit down and that will just give that floor a little bit more uh, direct light. The main thing to point out is that I'm going to turn on the this layer only checkbox as well. So that will only affect uh, the ground plane in the foreground since we've moved the light to layer 2 as well. And so that looks a lot better now, gives it a bit more light and matches well with the uh, darker paler background. Now I'll duplicate this floor plane and just create another one underneath the turret so don't worry if it goes through it, since the um, the other foreground will will block the um, intersections. I'll just make a couple of adjustments so that all these three little plates line up where I'd like them. For this, I'm just going to cheat a little bit, and I'll just scale out along um, the x-axis the UV map so that uh, we can fit a little bit more ground plane in there. There will be some seams for where the texture skips and repeats, um, but with so much happening in the middle ground in front of this ground plane, um, it should be okay and, and probably will go unnoticed. So I've moved that second ground plane over to layer one again as well. And now I'm going to just come in and add a circle, uh, just over here away from the scene. In the final scene, you may have noticed there was kind of like a barbed wire fence. So pretty much I'm just going to come in and create uh, the first pole for that. Just extruding out a little bit of scaling um, along just the one axis to allow me to bend the pole and create that little bit of a lip. And I've just hit uh, F at the end there to add an end gone to give it a uh, fill in the faces. So with that done, I've just repeated it, and then I'll just duplicate one of those circles and uh, extrude one that sort of cuts across all of them to create that horizontal bar. So I'll just place that so that it looks like it's sort of been welded in 
on the bar. And then I'll come in to my camera view and just scale and move that mesh until it matches up where I'd like it in terms of how big it is and where it lines up with the camera. I'll just make a few little tweaks and edits uh, so that all the proportions feel okay. And I'm just giving that a very basic material, very rough, um, low, in, low material intensity. And for a texture, I'll just come in, add this metal texture that we've been using a couple of times before and just give it a very low contrast, um, a little bit darker uh, brightness. And I'm just going to hit the repeat on the X and Y a few times and have that influence the color at about 0.5. So nothing too major since it's going to be pretty much like a silhouette in the final render but just enough to give it a little bit of a, a hint of texture or a metal appearance. So next up I'd like to create the actual uh, wire part of the fence. So I could do this with mesh but actually I might uh, just use a simpler method by just creating a plane and matching it uh, in between the pole the poles here in this in this uh, square area and then I'll just extrude those two vertices up about halfway up the lip of those two poles as well. So I'll UV unwrap that and just replace uh, the image with this barbed wire texture that I have here. I'll just scale and line it up and that's pretty effective and looking pretty good already, even in the 3D view. So for the material, I'll give it a very dark diffuse color and turn on transparency, take the alpha down to zero. I'll turn on shadeless and I'll just apply that texture as UV coordinates and I'll check the uh, alpha influence box rather than the color in this case and just uh, decrease the filter size. Now, so this big barbed wire texture doesn't get in the way, I'll just change the display type in uh, object uh, buttons to wire so that uh, we can see straight through it. And then I'll just duplicate that mesh to the other parts and sections of the fence. So I'll move all of these to layer two as well so that they're affected by the hemi light that's here in the same layer. And let's just give that a test render. Voila, looking good. It's looking great there in the foreground and working well with the ground plane. Now next up I'm going to use a little bit of a hack here to uh, fake the depth of field again. But this would be a different method than just blurring uh, the texture like I did on the, the back plate. You'll see here that if I go into the Z buffer of uh, the render, uh, it can't see through the barbed wire um, fence because it's a texture applied onto the mesh. So if I want to add a motion blur later as well, or if I want to add uh, depth of field, it's not going to work properly. So to fake that, I'm just going to come in and create a new render layer. I'll make the second render layer um, called the blur wire. I'll just name it that for reference. And I'll just click uh, layer two there as the only uh, layer to render. So that with that render now, I can just come into the node editor and add in a new render layer uh, node. Switch down at the uh, pop down box to our blur wire. I'll then just come in and add a dilute erode uh, node. Whoops, and I also want to set that uh, alpha to mask rather than the image. I'll just take the distance up so that that will uh, start to blur. I'll make sure that the falloff is smooth. Then I'll come in and add a blur node, take the original image and map it to that. Take up the, the blur to whatever works well. I'll then just add a mix node to put uh, the two together 
and then we use that uh, dilate eroded uh, second render layer as a, sort of a mask on saying which areas to blur and which to leave sharp. So you can see once we add them all together, we have this nice um, blurred wire fence in the foreground that uh, fakes the depth of field just like in the background. So that's pretty much all of our scene and lighting completed. Uh, at this point I'll just come in and uh, select the turret and start animating. So I might just begin with the lids that will open uh, before the missiles are released. And I just noticed that there was a bit of a weird deformation on one of the bones here. Uh, it sometimes happens uh, with mirroring and that. I can't figure out the problem, though you may know what happened. Um, but, you know, in a lot of situations when you just want to finish something, I'm actually just going to go ahead and uh, split the uh, lid meshes into their own objects and parent those directly to each bone. So all of the work that we did on the rig uh, bones are still uh, kept and the lids are open perfectly again, just using a different uh, method to get the same result. Initially, I'm just going to add uh, two keyframes, one closed and one where I'd like it to finish being open and set the keys, uh, the keyframe with I key. So if I come into the graph editor now, I can just take the uh, X rotation axis here marked in red and just duplicate the open key a couple of times and maneuver it around, press the V key to change the curve type to sharp or uh, smooth. Uh, depending. And so what I'm adding here is this one first open and then it's going to sort of bang back really quick from, from hitting the open stance and finally settle again after a few frames. I can then actually come in and just select one of these keyframes, hit L to select the whole curve and just come into the key uh, menu and copy that uh, curve. From there, I just need to set one key on um, another one of the lid bones. If I come in and just select the X rotation on that, I can actually come in and then just paste or with Control V, and it will give the same curve to that bone as well. So I'll repeat that for the other bones, and we're left with all four bones having the exact same uh, opening animation curve. Once that's done, I'll just go uh, one by one and change around the keys, move them all and offset by a couple of frames. And so then we have this cool opening uh, animation. So with the lid uh, animation done, I'm just going to move on to animating more of the main part of the body. And I'll start with that base bone at the very bottom that will move the whole thing. So I'd like it to appear from below the ground as if it's sort of coming through a, uh, a shaft that goes through to you know an inside bunker or something. I'll just add a couple of keys to the top of that. And I'll duplicate this key at the top here and I'll just hit the V key to make that sharp. And the idea here with this extra key is just so that it will uh, move up and then sort of reach a point where it maybe hits another uh, crank on the mechanism uh, that actually makes it then slow down so that it doesn't sort of go from this fast uh, appearing speed to suddenly stopping and it will just make the animation look more natural. I'm doing the same for the rotation and just giving that another key in between there um, of a sudden jolt and then it's slower and eases to a stop uh, um, just to give that uh, more natural look. From there I'll take the main turret uh, bone and once the turret's risen out of the ground and starts rotating, I'll then have that lean down and point a bit more onto an angle. And then after that, I'm just moving those four lid animation keys and sliding them along so that they happen at the right frame. So we'll skip forward a little now with my animating and I've just come in and tweaked the turret animation a little bit more but haven't really changed much else. And I've just come in and grabbed the camera as well and um, gave, given it a few keys, trying to, uh, as if a cameraman is there, trying to follow the action around. Pretty much using um, the free rotation of the camera in camera view, hitting 
the R key twice will allow you to uh, free look around with the mouse and I use that quite a bit um, just moving along in frames and adding keys after doing that free rotate. I've also just animated the uh, focal length as well as you can see just by um, sliding it to where I'd like on that frame right clicking and adding a key and there's a curve in the graph editor for that as well and now I've animated it sort of I've animated it shooting off into the sky where we'll follow uh, the missiles which haven't appeared yet and just to fill in some of the blank space I'm just going to duplicate um, scale and rotate this back plate a couple of times just to add more sky and more ground now just so that the camera doesn't manage to catch those trees in the view I'm just going to move the UV map a bit so that there's more sky compared to the ground there and I'll just be sure not to make the camera push too high Now to give the camera a bit more of a, a kick, I'm just going to come in and give it uh, select the the curve, for example, the uh, Y, uh, sorry, the Z rotation axis, and just give it a noise modifier. And so I can come in and, and uh, change the parameters, take down the strength, so it's it's uh, not jolting all over the place. And I can change the uh, scale as well, um, how quickly it's going to shake, and then the phase just for um, random variation to something that suits. So that would just give a bit more of a um, slightly bit more of a handheld uh, realistic look to the camera work. And if we just test that animation with a preview it's all looking pretty good. So pretty much all that remains from this point is just copying um, the turret to make uh, two more. I'll just quickly move that back plate so that it's uh, not in a weird, weird angle. I'd sort of moved it in camera view and didn't notice. But okay, now it's time to add uh, these missiles in. And not so much the missiles, we can actually get away without using any missile model at all. It's all going to be the smoke trail and a little bit of a flash that will uh, simulate the flames shooting out the back of the missile that we'll never actually see so we can get away with a bit here. First I'm just going to come in and uh, snap the cursor to um, about the center of these uh, four shoots that will have the missiles come out. I'll just uh, come in and add a standard plane. I'll delete all three of the vertices except for one and with this one vertice, uh, vertex I should say, I'll just place it um, at one of the shoots and duplicate it so that there's one vertex at each of uh, the exit points. So four vertices in this one object. I'll then just set a, a location uh, rotation key. And if I just follow with a new little window here in camera view, I can then just come along through the timeline and add in a couple of keyframes. One of it rocketing up into the sky and then as we move on along the shot I'll just add in one or two more keyframes of it curving and slowly moving uh, away from camera. Now you'll notice in the final shot that um, the missiles seem to look a bit random and so even though there's this is one object with four of the vertices which will become four different missiles I can for example uh, just come in and edit the location and rotation enough and then actually come through and do another pass where I increase the scale and that will um, add a bit more randomness with the rotation and the scale together. So at this point I'll just come in and add a particle system go into the particle buttons and just click on new now it seems to be coming out of one point and I'd like it to come out of all four of the vertices and create four different trails. But first things first, I'll just find out the point at which the animation of the missiles firing out starts and I'll change the start frame uh, to that. And I'll change the end to just past the uh, end of the shot, 240. 
I'll also increase the amount of particles to somewhere, in, somewhere between 4 and 6,000. And finally, just by hitting the Verts uh, tab there, that will uh, allow the particle streams to come out of each ver uh, vertex rather than the, the faces or the object. So that's starting to look really cool. From there, I'll just increase the uh, randomness of the particle stream and that will give it a bit more uh, spread out as it's had more time uh, out in the air from leaving the, the uh, back of the smoke trail of the missile. That's looking really cool. If I just come into the uh, scene uh, buttons though, I'll just take down the, uh, the Z gravity, which is currently set to one, and I'll just set that to about a fifth, so 0.2, and that will stop the particles from falling so quickly. So if I just come in and change the display type to circle and increase the size, we'll get a much better vis visualization of the, um, the particles. Yeah, it's looking pretty cool. So as one final point of randomization, I can come in and just add a shape key. And so I'll set the basis and then add one more, which will be our, our change, our changing key. And then I'll come in and just pretty much with that key selected, move the vertices at the end of the shot where I'd like them to end up. Now it might be a bit hard for you to see, but um, if I just come into this camera view at the left here and select it and move that shape key up and down, you can see the little orange vertices moving. And so that's going to be our start and end, pretty much just another element of these vertices moving around so that we can cover the fact that they are um, uh, all part of the same object. So you can see I just set um, a key at the start, value 0, when the missiles launch, and then just set another key at value 1 uh, near the end of the shot. And so as you get the rotating and the scaling of the object, you get all the vertices moving uh, in and amongst each other and you get that really cool randomized twisting uh, appearance of the missiles and it just saves you the time of having to animate each one uh, individually. So next is the material for um, this smoke. Now I've got one that I've prepared so I'll just import that and, and that's also imported two uh, empty uh, objects which I'll uh, explain in a minute as to why they were brought in as well. But uh, what I'm going to do initially is just attach this uh, large empty object. And it has some animation on it, so I'll just delete that. And actually just attach it to the particle object. So that it follows it pretty much as close as possible to the uh, start of the trail. So if I apply uh, the smoke material and quickly just make a couple of quick adjustments to the particle stream so that I'm happy with it and then I can actually just hit bake and that will lock it all in ready for rendering. You can see that um, here in the texture buttons for our smoke material the first one is just a cloud material with some um, hard clouds uh, set as the texture type and then I've actually set the um, the mapping coordinates to object and I've set it to that smaller empty that you can see a bit to the left of the 3D view. Now the reason I've done this is so that um, as the particles move through the sky, even though uh, in actual fact the text is just, just sitting there in 3D space doing pretty much nothing globally, um, as the particles move through space the texture will change and it will look a lot more like smoke and it will look a lot more natural from that rather than being just a static texture. The second texture I've given to this material is also uh, mapped to an object, in this case the larger empty that we just parented to the particle object. In this case um, I'm using the texture type of a blend, so up in the top there you can just select blend, it's the first one in the menu actually, and I've changed it to spherical progression type. If I check in that ramp checkbox I can give it a color ramp, so in this case I've just made it go from like a white to transparent and then I've had that affect the size in a small amount and actually what this will do is depending on uh, where this empty is and how much you scale it as you can see by a quick test render it makes the start of the smoke trail smaller and as it gets further away from the empty it increases uh, back to its uh, regular size 
Now you might notice from that test render the smoke was a little dark so just by coming in and adding uh, a light here and by making it only specular it will actually affect the particles but um, shouldn't affect um, or shouldn't very much affect the turrets or the ground planes so that will give this smoke a nice extra kick of light and I might actually just take down the power of that it was actually quite strong um, as a sun lamp so that's our smoke all ready to go and as just an extra little um, addition that will um, give a bit more to the render I'll select our smoke object that has the particle stream and I'll just duplicate that object uh, delete the material on the newest um, the duplicated object there and give it a new material now before I go any further I'll just delete uh, the particle system on that with the minus key uh, so that we don't have two of those objects with the particle system each and with this new material I'll call flare I'll just make the size of the uh, I'll first switch it to halo and I'll take the size pretty small to about 0.3 uh, take the alpha down a little bit too really pump up the hardness um, I'll give that an add value of 1 and then I'm going to check the rings checkbox and give it 4 rings and also the, uh, the star uh, checkbox and give that 4 and what you're left with is sort of this uh, booster rocket a little bit of, of flaring light coming out and since it's a duplicated uh, from the particle object it will actually uh, mimic the motion exactly of uh, each of the missiles so that's uh, a lot of the work done for us as well a quick test render and oh, the lights a bit overblown there probably from uh, having too much sky and not enough clouds so I'll take that larger uh, sky plane and just move the UVs so that more of the clouds stretch out into the screen and then we can see it cover a bit more of it there and then we have the uh, little bits of flashing light at the start of the smoke stream and one final thing that's definitely worth um, sharing really quickly you notice again in the final um, video there are uh, little numbers given to each of the turrets that are sort of like decaled onto each of the turret shafts and the way that I added these on was just by creating a, a new UV map here um, and then bringing in these three little numbers that I just uh, painted up uh, with an alpha map and so I'm just going to um, take these faces here on the uh, main part of the turret I'll just use a project uh, by view um, unwrap and then just slide the uh, vertices of the UV map um, until the number lines up and is the right size to where I'd like it so if I add a new texture in and I'll give that the uh, number of the image I will actually since it's the uh, middle turret I might give that one the number 4 even though the mapping will be the same um, and I'm using the 3 to map it so we'll just switch that to the UV uh, coords except I'll use the new um, UV map that we created not the first one and from there we can just add the influence for some color uh, some specular intensity and the only big difference is just changing uh, the uh, image mapping from repeat to extend and that will mean that uh, the number will only show up once and any repeated numbers like you can see down the bottom of the turret won't show in the render as it will just extend the edges of the image outward so giving that a, bit, a quick test render you can see there the numbers appear and we can just tweak the size and um, placing of the UV map um, to whatever works so moving on now to the final file uh, the final scene file which you can download and have a play and experiment with yourself um, all I've done is just taken uh, what we did with the middle, middle turret and duplicate it on the left and right side um, in the case of the particles I just um, changed the shape key so that 
um, they moved to a little bit of a different spot so there was that randomness and so pretty much the only thing worth pointing out here with the duplication is just to make sure that you give um, each new um, object a new material and new textures as you go to change things so for example uh, each turret has a different number on it for the texture so I've made sure to give that um, a new a new uh, material so like turret red 1, turret red 2 and then for each uh, new texture for example each decal 3, 4 and 5 I've, I've made sure to uh, make that a single user by uh, if there's a number 2 or 3 or something uh, next to the texture name I'll just click that so that it's uh, its own texture and it's worth pointing out also as I duplicated the uh, objects for the smoke streams the missiles fire out at different times as you can see so I've also given them a new uh, particle system each and and you've also got to be sure to free bake before you start editing and then press the bake button again uh, just to lock the particles uh, in so that they render properly another little thing you'll notice in the file as well uh, uh, the fact that I've animated the uh, size and hardness of the smoke uh, trail uh, material settings and that's just because at the start of the firing I wanted it to look like it's really filling up uh, the space around it and as the uh, missiles go up into the air I didn't need the, miss the smoke to be that big so um, keeping it efficient again all in the same particle system I just have the smoke quickly scale down um, as we look up and lastly, apart from the uh, base textures that we have on the smoke uh, streams, I've also just added a couple of extra little goodies using the exact same uh, texture tricks as the base materials as well. So you can see I've added another little spherical blend texture here with the same coordinates, um, but instead of affecting the size to go from smaller to larger away, uh, larger as the smoke stream goes away um, from the missile, I've just added one here that gives a bit of a red color. Um, and then I've also added another one here that affects the size to be bigger um, again as the uh, smoke really starts to um, have time in the air away from the missile. And then finally one more little texture there that uh, makes the smoke slowly fade away with alpha as the uh, missiles and that empty that's attached to them uh, floats further away. So that pretty much covers everything um, that I could give uh, an overview of for uh, this scene. Uh, this scene is also available to download in the description below. So you can have a look at uh, all of the things that we've talked about in this tutorial and experiment yourself. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this overview. And um, if you uh, found anything a little confusing or you wanted to know more, uh, feel free to come to our Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash CG Masters. So thanks for watching and happy blending.